Good evening. Welcome to Mystic Matters. I'm Kristen Hartnett, Membership Director at the Greater Mystic Chamber of Commerce. We're so pleased to have you with us tonight. And uh, we've been talking to our nonprofit organizations. Now, if you are a member of the Mystic Chamber and you're a nonprofit organization, you too can be on Mystic Matters. Just email me, Kristen, at mysticchamber.org and we'll arrange it. We have a whole schedule of shows and uh, we're so pleased that you're here with us. Okay, so also I wanted to say uh, upcoming holidays, your gift solution is the Go Local Shop Local card. You can buy that online at our website or you can buy it at the Mystic Chamber Welcome Center. Uh, we just finally had our last weekend of being open at the Welcome Center and it was a great summer. We were open all uh, the weekends, May to October. And if you need any brochures or if you want to be a member and you want to put your brochure in that Welcome Center, that's what you should do. That's one thing, just one tiny little benefit that the Mystic Chamber can give you. So today, we're gonna get right into it. I'm so pleased uh, to have as our guest tonight, the Riverfront Children's Center from Groton and representing would be Susan Radway, Executive Director. Thanks for having us, Kristen. Welcome. Glad to be here. Thank Always you. a pleasure Thank to you. see you. Absolutely. And Mayor Keith Hedrick from City of Groton. Thank you very much. This is great. I'm so glad that you can be here. So, um, Susan, tell us a little bit about Riverfront Children's Center, whoever uh, out there who doesn't know yet, where have you been? <laughs> where have they been? Well, you know, if they don't drive in that section of town, maybe they just don't know where Riverfront is, but we're right across from Electric Boat. We've been there for over 35 years, and uh, we provide early care and education for children 12 weeks to 12 years old, and we do that in partnership with a whole lot of people in the community, and one of them happens to be the mayor, which is why we've invited the mayor to be with us today to yeah, talk about I was the wondering. center. What's going on? How come the mayor's here? What is your role at Riverfront Children's Center? I heard you have an official title. I get to read to kids. <gasps> that is what I get to do. Okay. And anybody that's anybody wants to read to kids. Yeah. Right? I get to go every other week, every other Friday. I go and I go to the different classes and we read different books. And, and uh, sometimes it's the Pete the Cat books, it's those series. Sometimes when I'm with the younger kids, it's uh, books on colors and books on vegetables and books on animals and those kind of things. And, and it's just a great opportunity to, to reach out and support the, the neighborhood and to support the kids that are at Riverfront. Now, how did that start, Susan? How did that, uh, having the mayor come to read to the kids? It's about developing a relationship. And when I first met Keith, he was with his wife, Joyce, and his, his wife was uh, a professional working with young children, and, and he's raised grandchild, and, and just could see his love of children there, and said, you know, children are, are, we can always use people to read. And I think Keith's response was, when I read to children, it relaxes me. <laughs> it takes it, a little stress out of the day. It does. It's, it's, it is one of the things that I look forward to. It also, connects me back with my why, which is why did I run? And part of this is to be in touch with the neighborhood and to make a positive impact. And the kids are just, uh, they're, they understand themselves and they understand people and they're totally accepting of everything. And who you are, there's no judgment and they're filled with joy and laughter and just lots of fun. And it, it is such a blast to read to them. And they ask really good questions and sometimes they ask really hard questions. So, but it's a it's a great it's a great thing, and I'm glad that I get that opportunity. So they ask questions about the budget or anything like that. Or no, no, they're they're, <laughs> they're they're not asking about the budget. But one time we were talking, and the question was, what would it be like to fly a cloud? Oh wow! Right? When's the last time we asked ourselves that? Another one, and in that same group, we were going on, and they said, what does a rainbow taste like? And so we went through that with all the different colors and what do you think and what would it taste like and how long would it last and, you know, is it hard, is it soft, is it crunchy? 
You know, is it sweet? Is it sour? And they went through all of those things, and they and they told us told it so energetically, mm -hmm. and it was just so much fun to talk to them. So these are the important questions that you'll be asking in the board meeting, <laughs> to, or to the town council. You'll be saying, "What does a rainbow taste like?" <laughs> well, and that's you know, the nice thing is, they're they are not restrained by the laws of physics or any education that we've had and and they're just they go along and they get along and they they do what they're supposed to do whatever they want to do really one of the we had a uh, I think I was with the rabbits the last time I was with them and they had uh, they were talking about music mm -hmm. and they had karaoke and they had guitars or they had musical instruments some that they had made some that that were donated and they were up there playing a band. They were having a great time. Mm -hmm. And they will try things. And if it doesn't work, eh, we'll try something else. Right. And and they don't they don't see it as, oh, I failed. They're like, yeah, here you try, and I'll go do something else. And and the nice thing about all the groups at the uh, riverfront is the children get along. That's one of the things that is important there that we all work together and that we get along and we share and we we talk to each other and, and not just yelling and screaming and crying and pulling hair and those kind of things because sometimes we do that but um, is that in the council meeting is that what you were <laughs> no <laughs> actually actually our council meetings are pretty good good but but you're right these are things that uh sometimes we as adults i think if we went and spent more time with children we could see some of the civility and the way that they treat people, just in general, as opposed to, oh, I don't like you, mm -hmm. right? And th that's one of the great things. And, and the staff is there, oh my gosh, they are so energetic with the children and they have just tremendous patience because think about this, you have three, four, and five-year-olds, mostly three and fours, and you have more than one or two, you have 10 or 12, and you're trying, it's hurting, it's literally hurting cats. Mm -hmm. And one time we were on a playground, we were going from the playground to the gazebo, and we're so okay, we're, everybody's gonna sit here. So it's okay, we're gonna go in a line, and we walk up, and we're not really in a line. I'm an ex Navy guy, so I'm looking for a line. <laughs> and, and, and they're like, well, we, we kind of go more like a mob than like a line. Because they were like a snake, they were all over the place, but I mean, they were following the person yeah. behind them, but, yeah. but uh, and, and we eventually got there and, <laughs> and we were able to tell the stories and, and read. And uh, the one group, I forget the group that I was in, but they said, okay, everybody go pick a book. And next thing you know, there was a stack of books as tall as some of the children. And we went through, we just, we one book at a time. We said, okay, pick a book. And uh, in this case, they didn't have, a, there wasn't a chair. So I said, okay, let me get down to your level because, you know, I'm 6'4 and the largest thing in a room. And the first thing that, when I first walk into a room with children of that size, that age, is like, oh my gosh, he's so big. What's he going to do to us? <laughs> right? Is he going to eat us? No. You know, come. And so I sat down and I'm cross legged and I'm starting to read. Next thing you know, I got kids all on my lap. I got, Aww. you know, one over here, one over here, one hanging on this shoulder, one over here, Sweet. and they're helping me read and they're going through. And it is just, it, it is my whole mood and demeanor change when I come in. And then when I come back, uh, people work like, you read the day, didn't you? I, said, oh, I, did. Yes. <laughs> I did. So um, you're called uh, the chamber champion. Isn't that, no, the, um, the, the children's, children's champion. Children's champion. That's Riverfront's right. children champion of the year. And That's we are just so pleased to have uh, Keith's time at the center and helping to promote literacy, but also to talk about Riverfront and the importance of education for young children throughout the community and wherever he is. Now, we have some uh, pictures and maybe we do. Uh, show the one of the mayor first and then we can go through them. Right, absolutely. This one really ties together with a city <laughs> project. So another connection that we have here is uh, the scarecrow contest that the city is sponsoring for the first time this year. And so the classrooms are each making an animal. We determined that there's a prize for, for the best scarecrow. And so nobody wanted to compete against each other. Uh, we wanted to do something jointly together. So the decision at the center was to make Old MacDonald, the farmer scarecrow, and to have each of the 10 classrooms make an animal. So you're so, going to have a whole like diorama type we're of We're going to have a whole farmyard in the front yard of Riverfront. 
Uh, and then this is a citywide uh, competition? It is. It's the, the Parks and Rec is our Parks and Recreation are sponsoring it. And it's a, the first annual for uh, getting out scarecrows and, and putting out displays. It's, uh, it's the intent is to bring more people into the city to see the displays. And it's also to build camaraderie throughout the city. Excellent. So we're hoping that this will, uh, this will be a good thing for all of us. So and the last reading day, mm -hmm. the mayor was asked to read The Three Little Pigs because the classroom had been <laughs> learning about The Three Little Pigs because they selected a pig to make for their farm animal. Uh -huh. And the children all have their noses and their tails with the wolf and the pigs, and they know all the actions that go with the story. And, and so that was a real treat to tie that all together to our community mm -hmm. because yes. the Riverfront is accredited by the National Association for the Education of Young Children. We have a number of standards that we need to meet to be accredited and one of those is our connection to the community. And it's not just that you know what's in your community but you are interacting with your community. Mm -hmm. So our children know the mayor. Right. And that, that you can't you know that's the top of our community. And then they just go from there and their walks through the neighborhood around and about. Um, learning so, more about what goes on. What is the next picture that you have? So there? we also have some partnerships with uh, the University of Connecticut, Yukon Reads, mm -hmm. Husky Reads, sorry, and uh, they come in and do some reading and teach nutrition while they're, where they're doing so. We're combining healthy eating, food, and literacy together. So this is some children learning how to use uh, cut an apple using an apple corer. Now, you guys and also have like a garden over there? We do. We and do. Does that so grow food? It does. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it does. And uh, they go out during their, when they're outside and check how they're growing and pick tomatoes and eat them right off the vine. Uh, this year we had a class a teacher that made a teepee out of some very long um, tree branches and then planted green beans and they grew vines like Jack and the Beanstalk. Hmm. And the children picked beans for us far as they could reach and then somebody else did some picking of some beans but a huge crop of green beans that's fun what's uh, tomatoes, the next one? cucumbers making your own popsicles everybody loves popsicles when it's hot oh. so these are we these are some of our uh two-year-olds making uh popsicles mm -hmm. cute and this is uh some of our preschoolers again community and who's in our community uh I believe this was a instructor we have that comes in and teaches mindfulness to the children and yoga, so different activities and concentration. Could have been somebody different, but the bottom line message is we have a variety of people that come in and teach different skills mm -hmm. and introduce different things to the children, storytelling being one of them as well. And then the partnership that we have with different businesses in the, in the community allow us to get some projects done that we couldn't necessarily complete on our own or, or didn't have the money to complete. So this is a, a United Way project uh, with a team from Pfizer's that's helped us work on some playground redesign. So we've got a project with our playgrounds being uh, redeveloped. They had some safety issues, so we had to close them. They did some of the work, and then we've got the rest of the work being done by a local landscaper. It should be done next week, so we'll have a new playground for the children. They're excited about that. That is exciting. Yeah, yeah. So um, I wanted to ask you, Mayor Hedrick, um, what would you say the relationship between the city, like the government, and the nonprofits in the city of Groton is? Like, how do how does the city help the nonprofits and vice versa? Well, <clears throat> one of the things that we do is uh, we interact with if it's related with children, and not just children, but, but mostly with the kids, we have touch of trucks. So the fire department and the police department and the utilities will come down and you'll have the trucks and the kids will get to climb up into cabs and, and get to blow the horn and steer the wheel and, and those kinds of things. Um, other things that we've done, for example, at the Bill Memorial Library is we have coffee with, it could be coffee with the police, coffee with the uh, building inspector, coffee with the counselors. And that's an opportunity for us to get the city out there to meet the public. Mm -hmm. So that people, some people don't like to come to the municipal meetings and some people don't read Facebook and things like that. So uh, we try to go to where the people are gonna be and they're comfortable at the libraries. Mm -hmm. So with the nonprofits, it's important that we're embracing the nonprofits because we understand 
their importance. And it's all part of uh, the fabric of who we are in the city. Mm -hmm. And we're such a diversified and, and diverse city. And so that's, that's the one nice thing about seeing the children is that when I come into the children, I walk into a classroom and I see a rainbow, mm. right? It's not just one mix. I mean, one, one ethnic group, it is everybody is represented. And that's what the city represents mm -hmm. is, the, is the broader uh, display of ethnic groups in the city. And that is absolutely demonstrated at Riverfront and all the classrooms, you can go in. And everybody's getting along. And, and that's the nice thing about this age is that they're so accepting and they don't, I truly believe they are colorblind. Mm. They don't see, I don't think they see people for color. I don't see they see people for uh, economic ability or inability or whatever. They just see another kid, right? There's, some, there's a friend that I can go play with. Mm -hmm. and. They just embrace it and everybody's happy and they're laughing. And, and sometimes, uh, one class I, I walked into, uh, somebody was crying, so somebody else cried. And I'm sitting down, <laughs> next thing you know, somebody comes up and sits in my lap and starts crying. And I'm like, <laughs> all right, let's talk about this a little bit, maybe, and not a big deal with, not so good with crying. Why are we crying? Why are we upset? You know, and, but it's a, it's a great group now. There's a lot of energy. Mm. I mean, just, these, I mean, they're three and four year olds, and they have a, just a tremendous amount of energy, and and uh, some of it is is in the volume of the noise, but it's all happy noise. Yeah. They're not yelling and screaming, and and but for example, when I was with the group that was doing the little pigs, the people, the the, the people, the kids that were dressed as the wolves, they were going around howling, right? <laughs> and they were howling, and then the pigs were going around, and they were snorting, and, and they were going through, you know, little pig, little pig, let me in, and, and the pigs were going, not by the hair on my chinny chin chin, and, <laughs> and they were reading the story to me. So it's, it is just, it, it's such a great time, and, it, and it, you know, my, my heart swells with pride mm -hmm. when I see this kind of thing, because I go back to when I was a, a kid and my dad always said, you know, you got to take care of the babies and take care of the old people. Now, he was a little more straightforward and some people are comfortable with, but but I believe that you need to take care of the children because they are our future. And and our, our seniors, our elders, are the ones that got us here. Mm -hmm. And the children are the ones that are going to get us to the next place. And in some cases, they're the ones that are going to fix the stuff that we're messing up right now. Oh, great. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, they have such vivid and active imaginations, and it's just, it, it is just a thrill to have the honor to, to be there and to read with them. I mean, for me, it all started with just, I was sharing the pages mm -hmm. and, and liking the pages, and, and then I, I had the opportunity to read, and when Sue came to me and said, look, we're looking that, that you're our champion, and I'm like, with all the people that are out there and all the work that is done, isn't there somebody else more deserving than me? Because all I do is read. That's all I do. I, I get to read to the kids and I get to have fun. So it doesn't, I, I don't know that I feel like I'm necessarily deserving of, of any honor because it's just, it's a privilege to get to be with them. And it's such well, a great time. And then, yeah, you carry that light wherever you go yeah. after you read with them. So sure. um, it sounds like such a happy place. Now, now Susan, who gets into uh, Riverfront Children's Center? How do, how do the kids qualify? Right, so open to anyone. Uh, we, we, uh, part of our uh, mission is to provide affordable care so that any, everyone can uh, be able to know that their children are in a, a good learning environment that is also safe uh, f while they are working. And so that means that we raise funds to provide scholarships for anyone who cannot afford to pay the full price of care. And, and about 90% of our families receive some kind of tuition assistance. 90%? Yeah. That's yeah. really generous. The majority of families come from Groton and New London, but there's also others, Norwich, East Lyme, Waterford, uh, Mystic, you know, surrounding areas. 140 children total. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, no, is capacity. that limited or that's capacity? Capa that's okay. capacity. That's capacity. We have spaces right now for three and four year olds. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody else is full, okay. uh, but looking for three and four year olds. And I'm going to go back to, Keith's mentioned a couple of times, the 
basis across all age groups, while we're certainly looking at literacy and development in general, we emphasize kindness and social emotional development because without those skills, you can't get anywhere. And so uh, when Keith or any other visitors come in and say, we, the children in the classroom were so kind, we see the teachers responding respectfully, of course we expect that, but showing and demonstrating kindness it tells us that what we've been working on over a number of years with the classrooms is really working. Mm -hmm. And that, that if you stub your toe and go, ow, oh, somebody's gonna come up and put their arm around you and say, are you okay? And that is just so precious to see in a two-year-old well, to, to know so that they should do that. Now, Absolutely. nowadays too, it with is. the personal touch and yeah. you know, learning how to respond <laughs> to someone that's actually right next to you, sure. I think that seems Wonderful. Right, and to use your words. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have words, what are, the, what are the actions that you could use that are showing kindness as opposed to, I don't want to share my toy and pushing you out of, out of the way. Mm -hmm. um, so we work really hard at that. Now you were talking about um, you raise funds for scholarships, and so right. how do you do that? Right, so one of those ways is our upcoming gala on November 9th mm -hmm. at the Mystic Museum of Art. We are happy to have people join us. They can go to our website at uh, www.riverfrontchildren.org and they can order a ticket right online. All right, what's the gala going to be? Is there a theme? What are we going to It's farm to table, so a, a great uh, meal uh, provided by Gourmet Galley. Okay. And music. Live band by, sorry, I'm not the music person. I don't. Rock I'm... and roll soul reef. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> Rock and Roll Soul Review. Yes. Is that yes, the group? I think, yes. I think, and they're a local group. They are. They so are. And they were here local. last year and just people raved about them. So great dance and great music. And there's a silent auction okay. as well. So people can bid on items that have been donated by local businesses and local people. So thank you, local yeah. businesses and yes, local people absolutely. For, absolutely. for doing that. And is there still time, do you think? There is time. Donate? There are the time to donate, although that time is running up in terms of printing and whatever, but mm -hmm. uh, probably two weeks. Okay. So pretty quickly get on the, get on the ball and we'll get you in and there. And the gala is November 7th? No, 9th. 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 November 9th. That's a Saturday. So get your tickets. It is a Saturday. Get your tickets. Right, right. It is, you know, come on out. Get your tickets. Are you going to be reading the um, Three Little Pigs? Well, you know, this thing? You know, my wife and I were talking, and one of the things I, she said, because I said, what if I brought a Pete the Cat book and I, and I showed people what I did? She's like, oh, my God, you can't do that. <laughs> what? But you know what? I think that would be a blast. I think it would be wonderful. Because when's the last time you went somewhere and somebody read you a children's book? Well, sometimes right? the last time the maybe, mayor. Maybe Pete been. the Cat goes to a ball. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know a little Google search. But, there, but there's Pete the Cat. There's Pete the Cat and his four groovy buttons, and there's Pete the Cat and his rocking school shoes, and there's just a... <laughs> whole series of Pete the Cat books. And, and they're just so uplifting. And the children have, they, they request, can we read this, can we read it? And they know the story. Yeah, yeah. Right? And, and, and uh, you know, for example, with, with uh, Pete the Cat, he's singing his song about my buttons, my buttons, my four groovy buttons, my buttons, my buttons, my four groovy buttons. And the kids are saying that. Right, right. And then one of his buttons pops off and Oh no, one of Pete's buttons falls off and how many buttons does he have left? And we count down and then it says, did Pete cry? Goodness, no. Goodness, and, no. And, and, they're, <laughs> and the kids are all, you know, they're all into this and they're excited. And, and then at the very end, he loses all of his buttons and his shirt is open. And was Pete sad? No, because he has his belly button. And usually when I, get to that, <laughs> when I get to that point, the children will lift their shirts and like, everybody's got a belly button. Oh and my so, goodness. I mean, you know, there's, they're just, they're really into it. And they, See, and I they think are. the donations are pouring in right now <laughs> because of you telling us this wonderful story. Now, we've talked about how much fun it is, and you did mention a little bit about the standards. Uh, yes. So can you talk a little bit about the education that happens there? Sure, absolutely. Well? So for children up to age three, uh, teachers need, are required to do individual lesson planning to look at the development of each child and target 
uh, activities during the day that help children develop. So if it's the tiniest of baby that's laying on their tummy and trying to develop their neck skills to trying to learn to roll over, to the child that's crawling and, and practicing their walking, you know, strengthening their legs, uh, to a little bit older and putting stickers on the table so that they can use their fingers and find motor skill to try to peel stickers off the table. Mm. So you go on a table and wonder why people left all these colored stickers on a table and it's because children are going to come peel them off. Mm. And, and then the three and four year olds have a, a plan that is focused on a theme and uh, looks at uh, all the different ways in which learning can take place focused on a theme. So if the focus is on uh, airplanes for a week, there's math, there's science, there's literacy, uh, there's community, uh, all part of those lesson plans. And then children direct that learning by their questions. And so if they're really curious about the airport and we don't have enough information about the local airport, maybe we're calling the local airport and seeing if somebody will come talk to them about what happens at the airport. Mm -hmm. Or we'll talk about who drives by the airport when you come to school. Uh, so tying all that learning together. Uh, we're also required to um, engage families in, in their learning. So not only the community, but the families. Because children, their first teachers are their family, and we want to support that happening at home as well as the center. So the teachers and the families together are looking at children's development and learning what they can do together to promote that at home and at school. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Um, I'm also wondering, um, so you have been there for how long now? Three years. Three years, that's yeah. what I was thinking. And yeah. uh, what have you seen from the beginning to now? Like what are one of the, some of the things that you're proud of that you feel like maybe that you've helped to Right, right. Initiate? Well, definitely kindness. There was right. uh, the social emotional learning. There was some beginning work of teacher development mm -hmm. for teachers to, to understand how to work with children in promoting those skills. But we've brought some curriculum work in, the second step curriculum, which the school systems use. So we're teaching children language. Uh, related to sharing and feelings uh, and empathy that they'll be familiar with when they go into the public school, when they go into kindergarten. So uh, that. And we've increased our partnerships in the community, so we certainly have more readers and more people and more experiences for the children. And we have made improvements in the building. So the playground is an improvement right now. We put new floors in three of the preschool classrooms recently. Uh, there's a lot of painting. There's a, there's a lot that's happened to just make the, the building look engaging and fun for families and everybody to be proud of. Now, can other people in the community volunteer at the Urban Absolutely. Urban Center? Absolutely. We All have right. lots of ways in which people can volunteer, inside, outside. Whatever your skill is, let us know. We'd be happy to have you come and see how we can match that with uh, what's going on at the center. One time, once a month, or once a week? All right, and you too could be a children's champion That's like right. Mayor Absolutely. Keith Hedrick. I wanted to thank Riverfront Children's Center, Susan and Keith. Thank you so much for being here thank this you. evening. And uh, we are the Greater Mystic Chamber of Commerce, and we'll see you next week.